We often hear and can see evidence in our lives that God is love. He is merciful, full of grace, long-suffering, constantly forgiving and understanding. He is our soulmate, our best friend, our protector, our savior. We are told this and we read this in the Bible. And yet, there are times in the Bible when God kills. He destroyed the world in a flood struck someone dead just for touching the Ark of the Covenant, and commanded the Israelites to kill every Canaanite man, woman, and child. God is responsible for death on an individual and large scale. How do we reconcile this? How do we make sense of our God being pure love and yet the architect of so much death? The answers to this question are many and complex. There isn't a simple explanation and coming to terms with this dichotomy can truly only come from studying the Bible and developing a deeper relationship with God. In the instances where the Bible explicitly says that God commanded his people to kill others, or where he kills people through an act of God, each situation is different. There is no formula. Every event, every episode where God seems to command death and destruction has its own context and reasoning. One episode where God has his hand in the deaths of a large number of people can be found in the story of the Israelite exodus from Egypt. When the children of Israel were living in captivity and slavery in Egypt, God sent 10 disastrous plagues to induce the Egyptian Pharaoh to free the Israelites. The Egyptians had enjoyed the tributes and rewards of enslaving the entire nation of Israel for over 400 years and so convincing them they needed to free the Jews was no small task. This was especially the case when Pharaoh thought himself a god and had no idea who Yahweh, the god of the Israelites, was. When Moses told Pharaoh Yahweh wished him to free the Israelites, Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. God didn't just communicate to Pharaoh to free the Israelites. God warned Pharaoh of the dangers of not heeding his wishes. The Lord said, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I say to you, let my son go so that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your son, your firstborn. Pharaoh had kidnapped and criminally held God's own children against their will and his own. After God's warning and Pharaoh's negative response, God poured out a steady stream of death and destruction on the unsuspecting Egyptian people, collectively known as the Ten Plagues. The first plague struck at the heart of the Egyptian religion and agricultural lifeblood of the country. God turned the Nile River into a stream of blood. In the second plague, God created an army of frogs to terrorize the entire Egyptian nation. In the third plague, God brought down an incredibly annoying cloud of gnats upon the Egyptians. The fourth plague was another winged invasion, but this time of flies that menaced only the Egyptians and not the Israelites. In the fifth plague, God destroyed the livestock of the Egyptians. In the sixth plague, God struck the Egyptians with painful boils all over their bodies. The final three plagues were particularly gruesome. The seventh plague robbed the Egyptians of their agricultural crops with an incredibly destructive hail, but miraculously spared the Israelites' crops. The eighth plague sent by God was a plague of locusts that devoured the remaining crops not destroyed by the hail. Not having any plant crops or animals to eat meant the Egyptians would go hungry. The ninth plague was rather ominous in that Egypt was covered in darkness for three days, a sign of true terror to come. The final, tenth plague, was the worst of all. God sent the angel of death to kill all the firstborn males in Egypt. Even the Jews were not spared in this gruesome event. The people of Israel had to make a choice, a declaration of faith to follow God and smear blood above their doorways so that the angel of death would pass over their firstborn sons. God's wish was for Pharaoh to free the Israelites without death, but when Pharaoh did not listen, 
A heavy hand was the only way. God gave warnings. He sent signs. He made it clear to Pharaoh that the Israelites were to be let go and that he, Yahweh, was the Most High. Every situation when death and destruction comes from God is unique. There is no single answer to why God takes away life. Yet, in every instance when he does so, he does not do it out of malice or hatred. He does so with the authority of the creator of the universe and the giver of all life. In the case of the Egyptians, he warned them nine times to return his children before he resorted to violence against his own creation. What do you think about the issue of when God kills? How do you make sense of our God being pure love and yet the purveyor of death?